Hello and welcome everybody. This is a quick review of a new feature in D365 Finance and Supply Management related to transportation management. Let's take a look. This feature enables the system to apportion shipment freight costs more accurately, including for loads with multiple shipments delivered to various segment destinations along a single route. It assigns each shipment to the most suitable route segment based on the destination addresses of the shipment and the segment. The feature then calculates each shipment's freight cost as a proportion of load's total freight cost based on the shipment's relative weight, volume, quantity, and distance traveled. This feature only applies to shipments managed using the transportation module. In a simplest example, you have two sales orders that will be delivered on the same load. Both sales orders will be picked up at the same warehouse. The first sales order will be dropped off at the customer address number one, and the second sales order will be dropped off at the customer address number two. So the second sales order will travel both segments. And so this sales order should be apportioned the cost from both segments. The first sales order that was dropped off at the first stop should be apportioned only a part of the cost of the first segment, should not be apportioned any part of the second segment cost. So I decided to test it and took a fairly complex scenario that I'll show to you right now. So here's my setup. I have three sales orders, 218, 219, and 220. The first sales order goes to destination in California, Los Angeles. The second sales order goes to the address in Georgia. And the two lines on the third sales order go to Georgia address as well as Los Angeles address. Here's my first sales order. It has WMS1 item and the delivery address in Los Angeles. Here's my second sales order for WMS2 item and delivery address here is in Abbeville, Georgia. And here's a third and final sales order. The first line for WMS1 goes to Georgia address and the second line for WMS2 goes to Los Angeles address. I created a single load for all these order lines. You can see four lines coming from these three sales orders. This video will not cover how you build the load such as this, but this is what we're starting with right here. You might also notice that I have four different shipment IDs. So my four sales order lines have been assigned four different shipment IDs. It's important in order for this apportionment logic to work, we have to have the shipments because the shipments will be allocated to specific route segments. Having this use transportation management processes checkbox on the release product will not be sufficient for the new logic to be activated. Therefore, I had to create this product as a true advanced WMS product by assigning it to the where storage dimension group. That's an important point. Now let's go back to our load. In order for us to generate a route for this load, we will click on rate route workbench right here on the top. And now what I'll do is click on this route with rate button. When we're doing so, we see that we have only one option that does not have any exceptions. And this is a route that I have created prior. So let's take a look at this. Here is a route plan that the system showed to me. You can see that this is a predefined route plan. First segment goes from warehouse 24 and all three of my sales orders are shipped from warehouse 24 to the destination hub of Los Angeles. And the second segment goes from that Los Angeles hub to this Georgia hub. That is why when I'm doing the rating and routing of my load, I see this route plan presented to me because it has a match not only on the ship from warehouse, but also on the ship to addresses, Los Angeles and Georgia. You may notice that this is quite an improvement compared to the previous version, because in the previous version, all the route plans were presented to you without any validation of whether or not the addresses on that route plan match to the addresses specified on the order lines that were included in the load. So I quite like this improvement. Then we're going to scroll down. We see those two segments right here. And we see that the costs for the first leg is $1,200. And then for the second leg is $2,100. Now, in order for us to create a route and assign it to our load, we will click on assign button right here. That will generate a route that looks like this. And now if we select the first segment that goes from warehouse 24 to Los Angeles and click on shipments, 
we will see all four shipments representing all four sales order lines showing up here. And that makes sense because all the orders will travel the first leg. Then we will click on the segment, select the second segment here that goes from Los Angeles to Georgia and then click on the shipment information here. Now we see that only two of four shipments, therefore only two of four sales order lines are assigned to that second segment. Again, it's based on the destination address. Those two shipments belong to two different sales orders. So the assignment logic works perfectly here. Unfortunately, what I do not like is the fact that I cannot change that assignment. This assignment is automatically done by the system based on the addresses on our segments and then addresses on the order lines, but it cannot be changed. All right, in the next step, we want to see this apportionment logic kicking in. In order for us to do so, we need to go back to our load and we need to ship confirm that load. Before we do so, we need to make sure that any warehouse picking work is closed. And uh, I already have done that for the purposes of this video, but you have to do it on your end, otherwise you will get an error. You will see right here that I have a single set of work that was picking all of those four items from a same location in my warehouse and drop them off to the bay door location. So this work now is closed and therefore I should be able to ship confirm that load. Click on ship and receive and click on outbound shipment confirmation right here. Now we see that the load has been confirmed. You see the load status has been changed to shipped. There are a few things that had happened here. Number one is we have those freight bill details generated. The first segment is $1,200, where you saw that, and then the second is $2,100. So basically you can think of those freight bills as the expected freight charges before we actually receive an invoice from the carrier. The second thing that had happened is we have the miscellaneous charges added to individual order lines using the apportionment engine logic. Let's review that logic first. So we'll click on the generic engine and we'll see that our default apportionment engine, click on the parameters, is using the weight to decide how to apportion it, right? So the weight of the item will be quite important to then calculate the amounts of the freight cost that will be apportioned to that item. So now let's take a look at our first order right here, 2218. One thing I needed to mention here is we need to make sure that our terms of delivery are configured to have a specific checkbox checked. So I'm in the header of my first sales order and we will see that it has the FOB delivered term specified and these terms have this add transportation charges to order checkbox checked. It's important because otherwise if you do not have any delivered terms or delivered terms do not have this checkbox checked, then you will not see any miscellaneous charges automatically added to sales order lines when you ship confirm that load. Let's take a look at how the system actually was supposed to apportion that. So let's take a look at the first item on the sales order 2218. What the system should do is to take the cost of the segment and it is $1,200, then divide it by the weight, because remember the apportionment is done by the weight of all the items that travel on that segment. And we already determined that all four items do travel on the first segment. So the weight that we should divide it by should be 60 pounds. And then multiplied by the weight of that specific item. In our case, it's 10. And that's how we get to the $200 apportionment. For the second segment, this item is not traveling because this item stops at LA and the second segment goes to Georgia from LA. Therefore, the cost of the second segment should not be apportioned at all. Coming back to our sales order, this is our first sales order. Let's click on the lines. Let's click on financials here and let's take a look at maintain charges. Here is our automatically generated miscellaneous charge with code freight and we see that the charge amount is $200, exactly the way we expected. Now let's take a look at the second sales order. So the second sales order goes to Georgia. So it travels both legs. So the cost from both legs should be apportioned. This is a similar math, but now we divide the 1200 by 60 and multiply it by 20 pounds, not 10 pounds, because the WMS2 item weights 20 pounds compared to 10. Therefore, the apportionment from the first segment should be $400. And now we are coming to the second segment. So the total cost of the second segment is 
2100. Then we need to divide it by the weight of all the items that traveled there. And in our case, only two of four items have traveled on the second segment. So we should divide it by 30, take 2100 divided by 30, which is the weight of two items that travel that segment, and then multiply it by 20, which is the weight of our WMS2 item, and we get $1,400. So the $400 from the first segment and then $1,400 from the second segment. Here's our second sales order. Click on financials, maintain charges. So here's a $400 from the first segment and then as expected, $1,400 from the second segment. Now let's take a look at the third sales order. And here we have two lines. So the idea is quite similar. So we have an item that is WMS one item. It goes to Georgia, so it travels both legs. So we should have a cost calculated here for both legs, same math. So we get our $200 from the first segment allocation. And then for the second segment, we have 2100 divided by 30 and then multiplied by 10. And that's how we get those $700 here. And for the second sales sort of line, we should have only the cost of the first segment allocated because this item does not go to Georgia, it stays at LA. And the math is similar, 1200 divided by 60 multiplied by 20, we get our $400. So let's just check that. Here's our first sales row line, 200 and then 700 from the second line, great. And then this one should only get the 400 from the first leg apportionment. Let's just double check, maintain charges, here it is. So just to conclude, I think this is a great and much needed improvement in the functionality because compared to the prior versions, the allocation or apportionment were happening to all order lines, no matter if they were actually dropped off at the first segment or at the end of the second segment, the system did not have any logic to then decide which order line should be apportioned the cost of that segment. With this functionality in place, we have much more meaningful apportionment logic in place that will definitely benefit companies that are using transportation module in Dynamics 365 here. That is all I wanted to share with you today. Until the next time, take care.